Alright guys, it has been about two months since I last gave you a DC character histories and I thought it was past time that I do so. So this is going to be episode 16. Now if you want to watch the other 15 DC character histories that I have on this channel, I will put the link in the description below to the playlist and it will also be tagged in this video. Now episode 16 is going to be all about the Batman villain Firefly. I actually don't think this video is going to be all that long. His history is not as long or as detailed as I thought it was going to be, but nonetheless, if you are new here, the rule of it is I pick a random number in a number generator from number 1 to 357, and the DC Encyclopedia has 357 pages. Whatever number I get, I go to that page and whatever character is on that page, I make a video about them, and today it is Firefly's lucky day. So as for Firefly, he has been a long-time villain in Batman's rogues gallery. Firefly's obsession with fire has been seen many times in comic books, video games, animated projects, and live action adaptations. Some of you may remember him from Batman Arkham Knight, and others may remember this character from shows like Batman the Animated Series, Arrow, and Gotham. Firefly may not be the deadliest Batman villain around, but he sure has been a criminal weed that never stays down like most Batman villains in general. Now before we get into some of his history, let's look at some of his character data. So his first debut was Detective Comics Volume 1, Issue 184, which was June 1952. His real name is Garfield Linz, and there is another Firefly we will later be introduced to. His name is Ted Carson. His base of operations is Gotham City. His eyes are blue and hair is blonde. He is 5 foot 11, 167 pounds. As for his powers and abilities, he's just a pyromaniac with specialized fireproof armor. The suit has a jetpack with the ability of flight, and he himself is an expert in explosives and pyrotechnics. And then his enemies are, of course, Batman, Nightwing. Batgirl, or just the Bat family in general. Firefly, the special effect creator. As most superhero villains were back in the golden to bronze age of comic books, Firefly was just a robber who liked to steal from the rich. Although Firefly was a little different back in the day, the character was designed to fit the lighter tone style of Batman in the 50s and 60s. Instead of a pyromaniac like he is now, he would portray the idea of what a Firefly would be by having the technology to emit powerful and colorful light from his belt, blinding and distracting the dynamic duo for the betterment of his crime career. It is a good thing comics have changed characters' appearances and abilities over time. A couple of years later in 1959, a new character, Ted Carson, took the role of Firefly and instead of shooting rays of light from his belt, he instead shot rays of light from his helmet lamp. Cool. The actual Firefly now, so thankfully in the modern age following the Crisis on Infinite Earths event. This, as you know, if you've watched many of my DC character history videos, is where many character details and origins change. Thankfully, he was changed and changed for the better. So taken away from abusive parents, Garfield Linz and his sister Amanda grew up in St. Evangelina Orphanage. Unlike his sister, Garfield grew up troubled, and he eventually became a pyrotechnics special effects expert in the film industry. However, over time, Garfield started to feel the effects of Gotham City's poverty issue and resorted to earning money through crime. Really odd because you'd think a pyrotechnic expert for film would be getting fat paychecks, but I guess not. As a hobby, Garfield would only commit the crime of arson 
along with the overall crime of robbery. But as more and more arsons happened by his own hands, Garfield would become a pyromaniac due to his struggled childhood, and he also started to believe that he was seeing visions within the fire. So after this, Garfield gave himself the name Firefly, and early on in his criminal career, he allied himself with another villain named Killer Moth. And if you don't know who Killer Moth is, he is just essentially a character who views himself as the anti or opposite version of Batman, so he took on Firefly to be his Robin, if you will. Although their alliance is quickly thwarted when Killer Moth starts to realize how mentally damaged Firefly really is, to the point where he actually feared for his well-being. Plus, Batman just simply beat them and put them in Arkham Asylum. Firefly during Nightfall. Now, during the Batman Nightfall series, which this is the popular series where Bane breaks Batman's back, Firefly eventually breaks out of Arkham Asylum due to Bane destroying the exterior walls of the asylum and then he embarks on a new crusade. Firefly creates a new suit and a glider and decides to burn privileged places that he was never capable of going to as a child. In an attempt to burn down Gotham City, Firefly has four separate targets, a pier, a feeder, a zoo, and a chemical plant. Every single location on his list, Batman showed up to fight off Firefly, but the chemical plant was the worst of the worst. Firefly caused an uncontrollable fire that causes the factory to explode, and 90% of Firefly's body is scarred from the burning as a result. Firefly in War Games. War Games is a great Batman comic series that I suggest you read if you haven't. But at this point, Firefly simply enjoys the satisfaction of arson. Any job he can get that will offer that, he will take it. So Penguin hires Firefly as a simple distraction while the entire city swallows itself in gang wars. With all hands on deck, the Bat family are doing whatever they can to save Gotham. Nightwing eventually runs into Firefly, which results in Nightwing being the victor of the battle, and Firefly being sent to Blackgate Penitentiary. Things get so bad in war games though that even Blackgate gets taken over by the criminals, and Batman sends Nightwing to take the prison back. Unfortunately, he loses and gets locked up in Blackgate along with Firefly and other criminals. What I'm about to say here of course did not end up happening, but Firefly did attempt to kill Nightwing and wear his skin over his burnt body. Yummy. Firefly in Battle for the Cowl. A couple of years later, in an attempt to take Gotham for himself, Black Mask devises plans to destroy certain parts of Gotham. A transport of criminals traveling to Arkham Asylum was attacked by Black Mask, and in doing so, the inmates were forced to join a new army that Black Mask was creating. One of these inmates was Firefly, and he became an important person in Black Mask's plans. Firefly was used to destroy GCPD and later joined Killer Croc and Poison Ivy in destroying one of Penguin's warehouses. While escaping in a car convoy, Firefly chased Penguin and nearly killed him, although it was Catwoman who interfered. By the time Firefly got rid of her, he also lost Penguin. Firefly was eventually arrested and Yep, you guessed it, placed back in Arkham Asylum. The New 52 and Rebirth Firefly. Now, he does not have the most stories in these continuities, but I digress. In this new continuity, 
Garfield Lens is no longer Firefly, it's now Ted Carson. Ted Carson fakes his death to escape from his relationship with an actress, Cindy Cook. When faking his death, he would then suit up as Firefly, insinuating that Garfield Lens has returned as the famous pyromaniac. Although his plan was eventually learned by Nightwing and Batgirl, and he was defeated and thrown into, yep, once again, the infamous Arkham Asylum. So like I said, Firefly would have a couple more stories in these continuities, but nothing too big. For example, when the crime syndicate comes to our Earth, this causes chaos around the world and turned Gotham into a war zone where a separate war between Scarecrow and Arkham Asylum versus Bane and Blackgate Penitentiary began. Firefly sided with Scarecrow, but eventually their side was defeated by Bane. Eventually, during the threat from the Batman Who Laughs, multiple inmates were released by the Batman Who Laughs in Arkham Asylum. He gives each one of these inmates metal Joker cards that grant them specific powers, and Firefly was a recipient of one of these cards. For some time, he was transformed into another version of Man Bat. Finally, in DC Rebirth, Two-Face has a multi-million dollar bounty on Batman that Firefly and Killer Moth try to collect. That obviously fails. He is then last seen during the events of the Riddler-Joker War, where he sided with Team Riddler. There it is, guys. That is a small history of the Firefly character. Not as much as I actually thought there was going to be, but the more I think about it, Firefly has never really been used as a main villain in DC Comics or Batman in general. To be honest with you, Firefly seems like nothing more than just a glorified right-hand man or some sort of distraction or, you know, cannon fodder, anything like that. Firefly is certainly not a character that's going to devise a master plan. He's not going to be a main villain or a main threat. Even if you want to use Firefly for a movie, I could see them doing a situation where he's like the beginning of a film. He's maybe a villain that Batman is fighting within the first 10 minutes and he beats him within those 10 minutes. He truly is not the most exciting character out there, but you know what, even those types of characters have to serve a purpose, and I think the purpose of Firefly is to be that cannon fodder character, and he serves that purpose well. But that is it for this DC Character Histories video. It felt like a breath of fresh air to come back to this series and write another script for a new character. Once again, if you do want to to see other DC character history videos, you can go to the playlist in the description below, and eventually I could be at 100, 200 videos, who knows where this series will be in the next year or two. But anyways everyone, that is it for this video, I hope you all enjoyed it, and until next time, I will talk to you all very soon.